Hello, uh, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm at the University of Ottawa in the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology and I study abrupt climate change and often do uh, videos to uh, explain to people uh, sort of the state of the climate system. Um, I've taken a bit of a hiatus or pause from uh, doing that to work on a uh, new website uh, which is essentially completed and well it's getting there um, and uh, also working on writing a book and um, trying to uh, figure out a way to get to the Paris uh, climate change conference. I'm presently not going. Uh, the conference starts in a couple weeks uh, and uh, you know hopefully you know there, there, there's a remote chance that I'll uh, be able to uh, end up going uh, but it's nothing nothing's definite so let me show you uh, some of the things that I've been up to here just give me a second here okay so Today I just sent out a tweet, um, well I sent out multiple tweets, but this one here is the winner for today. Uh, basically uh, one graph to rule them all. El Nino is going where it has never gone before. Um, so basically uh, what we have here is, uh, we this curve here is um, 97 to 98, the El Nino. So this is a temperature, uh, you know, temperature rise above normal for the uh, ocean. Um, and here's what we're doing uh, now. This is where the El Nino this year is tracking and suddenly it's spiked up. So it's basically off the charts. We're in the 97-98 the El Nino was one of the strongest in, the, in a, you know, in a century or more. And uh, 2015 blows it, all, blows it away. It, it destroys that record. So there's lots of people um, that are retweeting and so on. What I really like about Twitter here is this view tweet activity button. And what you can do is you can see that, um, you can see the stats. Um, so the number of uh, impressions, which is the number of times people have looked at it and total engagement when somebody shares it or links or retweets or, um, or you know, replies to it. Uh, clicks on the hashtags, etc. So in a couple hours, this one is, uh, you know, getting lots of visibility. Um, so let's have a look at the, um, what's happening with the, the ocean. So what are we, what are we getting here? Um, this is the climate reanalyzer uh, data. I'm just going to back up a bit so you can see the screen a bit better. Um, and you can see this nasty gash here, this nasty red gas. The temperature is up to four degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Um, and we've just crossed these, uh, you know, the, we, we, we're, we're, we're way higher than uh, 97, 98 now. Um, you can see that the entire North Pacific is 0.83 degrees Celsius warmer. North Atlantic is warmer. Northern Hemisphere is extremely warm. Um, and you can also see, you know, this area here was where there was a blob of warm water for a long time, a persistent blob, and up here there was another blob of warm water. We're getting some more structure in here, but the El Nino is, El Nino is extremely um, strong. And you, this is temperature anomaly. You can see over North America very warm, colder than normal up here, and so on. This is an excellent site. Um, and this data is from today. This is from Monday, November 16th. Um, if we look at the uh, jet stream patterns, okay, so this is the, uh, this is the jet stream patterns. This is uh, South America. Um, this is the uh, Pacific uh, near the equator about here. And you can see these very powerful uh, winds moving this way and in the northern hemisphere they're wavier and fractured and more broken up which is indicative or it's a direct result of a rapidly warming arctic 
which is lowering the temperature gradient between the Arctic and the equator, which is then um, causing the jet streams to slow down. And when they slow down, they become wavier and they, their location depends more on land-ocean uh, contrast. Uh, what we're showing here is the, um, this is the ocean currents. Um, you can see the water being, the, the surface water being driven here. So it's taking the water, the warm water here, and it's pot bringing it across the Pacific and it's piling up on um, to South America. So this is, uh, this is the classic state of the El Nino. Um, it's still going to be getting stronger for at least a few months. Um, you know, we can go back to um, this uh, plot here and uh, you can see um, that, you know, there's still a few months when it sort of is maximum. So, you know, where are we going to go here? Are we going to come down? Are we going to come across? Are we going to keep going straight up, you know, and blow away all, all records even more? Um, okay, so um, this is a polar view of the jet streams. Um, this is uh, from the great site uh, Earth.Null School, and you can see Greenland here. Um, you can see uh, the Scandinavian countries here. Canada is down, there's Hudson's Bay down here. So you can see the, the jet stream has ext is extremely fast, 320 kilometers an hour. You know, might be a bit stronger here. Nope, not quite. But this is this is very wide. It's unusual that you'd see it wide. It's more de it's more usually more defined. Um, so you can just I could zoom it to get more accurate numbers. This is a rough idea of the of the speed. Um, this is about this is about two hundred miles an hour or so. But you can see how you know it's split and then recombines and it's got these waves that which um, very wavy in the north south direction so uh, it causes the cold air to go down here warm air to come up here you know Europe's under under record uh, temperatures right now which is which is uh, you know po there's poetic justice in that since the COP20 is starting very soon um, what this is showing is this is showing what happened with the sea ice um, so the sea ice, um, this is, I'm, what I'm showing here is just a movie of sea ice thickness. So this is about five meters, four and a half meters thick, going down to uh, very thin ice. Um, so what we're seeing is, and this cycles through for a year. So this is um, June of this year. Um, moving to July and you can see that so the thickest ice there's not a lot of thick ice the black and red there's minimal and now it's going to the minimum which is about um, September um, mid-September and you can see how there's not much thick ice left at all I mean most of it is a couple meters thick and now it's growing but you can see this area here is pretty much devoid of ice this is a new feature in the last number of years this used to be filled with ice you can also see lots of export here, and that depends on the uh, circulation patterns. Uh, but there's a lot of export here, there's a lot of export here. This, this ice will then melt and that cold water will go down and the cold water is pooling south of Greenland. And what that does is it blocks the Gulf Stream currents, which would normally come up and bring heat into the Arctic. Now they're coming more west to east, they're not going as far north. <clears throat> So the water where the Gulf Stream is, the Gulf Stream would come up here before, and now it's coming down here. So that adds to this area being colder than normal, this area being warmer than normal. Um, but the, um, this movie is playing over a year, so it's showing a yearly cycle of the ice growing in the winter, declining. Um, so this is, so here we are, 2014, uh, December and then uh, it's growing, it keeps growing through to, through into March, and then it starts to decline. So this is a maximum extent, and there's really not a lot of uh, thick ice. There's not a lot, I mean, this is, a, this is a, the, the dead of winter, and now it's melting away, declining in area. So the, the key thing about the sea ice is it, it is, it is um, about 50% roughly responsible for the 
uh, Arctic temperature amplification, the reason why the Arctic is much, much warmer, uh, the rate of change of, of uh, temperature in the Arctic is much, much warmer, it's because of the sea ice decline and the snow cover decline, in the, mostly in the spring, which makes the Arctic darker, it absorbs more solar radiation, causing heating from the sun, because it's hotter, there's less heat that's transported northward in the ocean current and in the air current, so that makes the jet streams wavier and and also uh, slows down and makes the Gulf Stream push over the continental shelves off of the U.S., causing uh, you know extensive um, quick sea level rise there, much higher than the norm. And in fact, off uh, the U.S. East Coast, north of New York. The uh, sea level rise was as high as four to five inches in a year, uh, not too long ago. Um, so this is just showing uh, the sea surface uh, temperature, and uh, you can see, so this is temperature in degrees Celsius of the sea surface, and you get this pool of cold water in this region, as I mentioned. And there's lots of other things going on in the Arctic. I won't dwell on them, but you can see in the, sp in the spring, and, and um, this is the uh, middle of the summer, it's really warm, the spring and the, uh, and the uh, fall. This is the mean Arctic temperature north of 80 degrees. And you can see that the scale is about five degrees here between the numbers. So we have five degree warmer than normal in this area and approaching that in this in, in, so in the spring and fall is the time when the temperature is a lot different. The change is less in the middle of the summer. Um, and the last thing I'd like to talk about is uh, my new website a little bit. So um, there's some of these menus are still being populated, but most of them are being filled up. And if you, if you check back in the uh, three or four days, you know, a week at the most, uh, these should all be completely finished. So there's lots of movies here, all the, a lot of the videos that I've done. Uh, there's the Hansen videos, for example, you know, uh, academic stuff, so climate change solutions, um, stuff about me. This is one of my favorites, Wacka Denier section, you know, that, and that's not under humor. I'm serious about that one and so on. Uh, muses and insights, you know, what I think about population, what I think about the university silo effect, etc, etc. And uh, this was just put on here a week ago, so if you're able to, please, uh, please, uh, I'm not getting any university funding uh, for my work or for my website. I've got a great uh, guru, a great Yoda, uh, David who's helping me um, he's uh, helped me tremendously uh, do the doing the website and I've been uh, paying him for that he's a great guy so if you need a website don't talk to him for about a week and then talk to him because uh, he should be he's got a lot of stuff to do for me uh, before then but please consider supporting my work um, I've managed to raise about 40% of the uh, cost of the uh, website so far um, so, uh, and also, I'm, like I said, I may end up uh, um, f figuring out a way to get to, uh, to, get to Paris, uh, to the uh, COP21. Uh, so uh, thank you for listening, and uh, this uh, represents the first, of, uh, first video I've done um, since I started working on the uh, website. Uh, so the website, with the website completed, the next big project for me is uh, to work on a book, um, uh, and uh, I've got the basic outline done. I want a book that's easily understandable for the general public to explain the extremely high risks that we have from our rapidly changing uh, climate system with all the feedback. So thank you for listening, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.